Now, friends, there are few characters more controversial in not only the history of the church, but also Western civilization than St. Augustine, whom we give God thanks for on this his feast day. Um, I mean, a lot of his critics would say he was far too harsh on sexual morality, etc. And um, I don't know, friends, I have found that that's a very superficial reading of Augustine's works, and it completely misunderstands him because it looks at this saint without the eyes of faith in Jesus. That's why I've noticed whenever we look at theologians, holy theologians or saints throughout the history of the church, and when we do so without faith and love of God in our hearts, they can become quite a conundrum to us. And so we start poking at them a bit more than we should. Um, and something he did become something to be de deconstructed, essentially. But Augustine, he's an interesting guy. I mean, he was born in the year 354 to a very famous mother, Monica, whose feast day was yesterday. Um, and she never stopped praying for, for Augustine, who was a pagan for about 34 years. And very interesting, after he was baptized, his mother died quite, quite soon afterwards. And I don't know about you, friends, I've noticed that about a lot of saints. When we stick to what God has called us to do, it can be quite a particular task. We, he often calls us home earlier, after, not, not too long afterwards. You need about trade with you, etc. It's very interesting. Um, it seems to be a common trait among, among a lot of saints. But I mean, like I said, Augustine, he was a pagan for about 34 years. And of course, he's very famous for his confessions, the works he wrote, where he really laid out what he used to do his whole life. Uh, this overindulging on sexual appetites, like to us know tomorrow. Uh, his pride, his ego, he, he, he couldn't get enough of all that stuff of the world. You know, grasping at sensual and senseless pleasure. That was the hallmark of his youth. Um, but yet at the same time, he was an extremely gifted uh, academic. He excelled in everything he put his, his, his mind to. Very smart guy. Um, and yet, in all of that, he had no peace. This is the one thing that was niggling, niggling at him the whole time. No inner contentment. No matter how much he grasped at the pleasures and desires of the world, no fulfillment. And you know, it's after he's converged to Christianity, that's what made him think about the nature of what he, where he was going wrong, what we call the nature of sin. You see, everybody, for Augustine, sin is a disorder um, in our desires that leads us to seek pleasure, to seek beauty, seek truth even, only amongst the creatures of this world and ignores God completely. Seeking good things, that they put, ignoring God. That's where St. Augustine was getting it wrong. And he really realized that. Um, you know, you know it's, it's, it's about friends, you know, um, sin is what disorders good desires. Good things we search for in this world, but we completely ignore God. We get them either from ourselves or from other people around us or the world only by itself. And of course, then good things become snares and traps for us. They don't lead to heaven. Only God can, friends. Only Jesus can lead us to heaven. That's it. Only one person. He's only one savior in this world. And that is Jesus Christ. Only he can lead us. Only he can turn our good and wholesome desires as pathways to heaven. That's one of the key attributes of St. Augustine. And it's a beautiful understanding of holiness when you think of it. Um, but like, as, as many of those guys back then were extraordinary, once he was baptized, it wasn't long before he was ordained a priest, and then people wanted to become a bishop of a really important part of Christianity in North Africa at the time. And he was an exceptionally good leader as a bishop in his clear, concise teaching, and he fought so many heresies at the time. Um, and his, his theology is part and parcel of church doctrine. So a really important guy. But you know, I was reflecting on this here earlier on today, and on Saturday, I came across an article in the Irish Independent, which I kid you not, it pushed for and encourages people to engage in orgies. All right? I couldn't believe it. Now the subline to that, that heading was this, and I quote, it said, group sex scene has exploded in Ireland over the past five years, with social media opening up a world of information to looking to explore ethical non-monogamy. Ethical. Uh, friends, look, at it gives some indication of where so many people in this country at the moment view both themselves and the people around them as objects for desire. It's quite serious. And again, it's just, it's just an extent of the sexual revolution from the 60s, where anything goes, love is love, as we're told the whole time. And like, 
On top of that, everybody, you have the idea that traditional families, the traditional family unit, or anyone who espouses traditional family values are frowned upon. And instead, what's encouraged is unfortunate teenagers who are in a bit of trouble to give into all sorts of things like to undergo surgeries, to um, pretend to be another gender. It speaks volumes, everybody, of the irrationality of our age. And yet we're scratching our heads to figure out how is society in such a decline? I mean, moral decay, it always leads to social corruption, which I think is a byproduct of very bad leadership, really bad leadership, both in church and in state. I mean, it's really serious because I know a number of clergy um, who actively promote sexual uh, immorality, which is completely contrary to the teaching of the church. Um, really serious folks. Um, and of course, this, 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 the definition of sin of Augustine, where our, our desires are, are twisted and turned around because not aimed towards God, depression is on the rise, uh, despair is on the rise. Not good, you know? I mean, St. Augustine's Confessions, friends, I think it should be a basic read to all secondary Catholic schools in this country. It should be one of the few things that everyone and everybody reads because it's so powerful in the difference it shows when we orientate our desires and wants in life towards God and when we don't. Superb piece of work. Uh, funny enough, on Saturday, I, um, I concelebrated a wedding on Saturday in the city centre where, friends, I struggled to hold back tears of joy um, throughout the whole wedding. It's the only we the second wedding I've ever been at where every aspect of the Mass is all orientated towards God. Music, prayers, words that were said. Amazing. True Christian wedding, everybody. Um, the beauty of seeing two young people, obviously not only madly in love with each other, but very have a deep love for Jesus and it burst through them in ways I haven't seen for quite some time. I mean they are full of joy, full of peace and freedom which I said was quite rarely seen at weddings and I wasn't the only priest at the altar to hold, try and hold back tears of joy. I mean they even did their own readings and sang the Psalms and the Alleluia. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful stuff. My friends, that's witness which that couple gave was so powerful because they understood faith in Christ and its impact on our morality, what we're supposed to try and do in this world. They understood it, and they understood Christian marriage to a whole new degree. Um, powerful understanding of what happens when we just orientate our desires towards God. That's why Augustine himself said, you, God, have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. I know, friends, I think it's, 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 it's wholesome, faith-filled Christian moments like that wedding I saw on Saturday where true renewal of society is going to start coming into play to transform society. Instead of these the pressures on young people today and all of us to give in to short bursts of pleasure and happiness which will never, ever fill the heart. Anybody who has actually encountered Jesus in their life will know that to be a wholesome truth which can't be changed. I mean, St. Augustine knew this, everybody, and that's why I think to re-evangelize society by the power of showing what happens when we order our desires towards God. Let the saints rise up for Christ once again and reverse society's troubled avenue that it seems to be going down of doom and gloom and instead aim for the heavenly attributes of faith, hope, love, and peace and freedom. St. Augustine, pray for us.